guys, good morning, Victoria here, welcome to my channel. Today is Monday and I'm not feeling exactly quite well or quite myself. Uh, there is a lot going on around me uh, and in my, <laughs> you know, in my head and so it's hard to stay focused when you have so many thoughts and feelings that can distract you. So this kind of inspired me uh, for today's video actually because I don't want to let this kind of uneasy feeling to take over and get worse and I don't want to become sad and be down and feel negative and you know this whole thing tends to spiral and gets just worse and worse and then it's like a self-feeding feeling sorry for ourselves spiral that can get much worse and i'm not saying that we should force ourselves to be positive and not let ourselves to feel our feelings and feel down sometimes but for me personally at this point it really doesn't make sense i really don't need to overthink and project and put myself down because there is nothing really major or traumatic that has happened to me it's just there are some things which are in the air which are pending and i have some negative thoughts which may or may not be real but at this point i'm uncertain so I don't want to let myself focus on the negative. I want to get myself out of this spiral. Luckily, I haven't been going down too deep, so it's easier. I just want to make myself feel better. And in order for me to feel better, I need to take some actions, not only for my mind, and my emotions but also for my body for my environment and tend to my general overall well-being today i am going to do some things for myself and i'm going to share my tips how you can also pick yourself up if you feel a bit uneasy if you have some negative thoughts if you are worried if you have some doubts about your future if you're overthinking <laughs> rather than engaging in that thought process and being distracted the whole day and not being able to get anything done let's try together to make this day a better day for ourselves so i started my day with yoga as usual most days i start with a short yoga session in the morning and then today i also added a 10 minute meditation after my yoga which um, i'm trying to get into the habit of that as well after that i had some hot beverage decaf my routine includes one caffeinated coffee per day and outside of that i do drink green tea or black tea sometimes not not every day although in the colder months i do but in the morning, since you just get up and your body is just starting to function and your hormones are actually working to wake you up so you don't need coffee. So I feel like it's unnecessary to give myself this extra caffeine boost. I can use that after lunch. So I just had my hot beverage and then um, I started to think about how I want to make today a great day, a better day for myself. So... That's what we are doing. One of the things that I do for myself on these days when I need to pick myself up a little is to get ready, get dressed. I mean, I'm not like super fancy dressed because I'm gonna spend my day at home so I don't need to dress up as if I was going out or going to work. But at least, you know, not stay in my pajamas or not feel very slumpy. So wear something that I feel comfortable in, but not like, staying in my pyjamas the whole day, which can actually generate this meh feeling, at least for me, and I think many people have similar experiences with that. And then I also put on some makeup, just um, for me personally, that helps me to feel better, even though I'm not going anywhere. I mean, during the day I will go outside, because that's one of the things that I like to do for myself when I want to make sure that I am feeling my best. 
but yeah just basically some simple makeup just for me to feel better it's just a little extra something that helps me to boost my confidence and my energy some days i don't do that and yeah if i go days without actually thinking about what to wear or do my hair or put on makeup then somehow that also generates some negative feelings in me not feeling my best so that i do for myself i make my hair i braid it in my hair and then the next thing which i am going to do now is to tend to my environment i'm going to clean up a little bit tidy up put things back into their places, organize uh, my desk because my desk actually needs a bit of cleaning as well. So I'm gonna just empty the surface and start fresh and clean because yeah, I think on a Monday morning, this is a great way to start your Monday or already if you are like very well prepared, you can do that already on Sunday evening to get your desk ready for the work week since I'm working from home and I spend most of my weekdays in front of my computer. I need that space to be tidy more or less, but I, I mean, it's never really tidy because I have a lot of things there which I need to have, you know, easy access to that I need to grab during the day. So I don't have a super clean desk. I still realize that when it has a cleaner picture overall, when there is less clutter on the tabletop then it is more inspiring to me personally and I feel better and I don't have this extra level of heaviness that something is weighing me down as I'm trying to focus on my to-dos and before I start that let's just hydrate don't forget to hydrate throughout the day I am drinking filtered water this could also be tea Try to avoid sugary drinks because a lot of sugar also weighs you down and doesn't make you feel your best. Let's start with the desk and move on from there.
I just had a one hour long phone call with a friend of mine just talking about life and chatting away about our latest experiences and how our days went and some relationship issues and stuff like that. And now it is time for me to start cooking lunch. So the next thing that is important when I feel down is to nourish my body with the right food. For me, my health and wellness is very important. So when I can, as much as I can, I like to make my own meals from the ingredients that I know that I self pick from the stores rather than go out or take away or order food from places and, and sources where I don't know where it's coming from. Obviously, I could be better at that. There is always room for improvement. I live in an apartment. I don't have a garden. I am not growing my own vegetables. So obviously there are limits to how healthy you can eat and how nutritious your food can be. But I try to do my best and I believe in the power of plants. So I'm going to now cook something for lunch that will make me feel good, that will taste great, that will nourish my body, that will give me energy and that I feel good about putting into my body rather than you know feeling bad that oh I just had a piece of cake and it was full with sugar and other harmful ingredients whatever you don't even know. While the vegetables are baking I am going to work on my to-do list for this week I like to have a weekly to-do list and then sometimes I break it down to daily or I just decide like on which day I'm focusing on which item on the to-do list. And so I'm going to take a look at my last week's to-do list, check the items that were not tackled last week. I'm going to move them to this week or identify if I actually need to or have to get those things done or why were they not prioritized last week and maybe they will be just neglected completely and then I will think about everything else that comes in addition to that to the to-do list and the reason why I'm doing this is that in order for me to feel my best I need to feel a bit accomplished I need to feel like I did something during the day I achieved something so in order for me to be productive and feel best and not feel that I'm procrastinating, not feel that the whole day went without me actually getting anything done or achieving anything. I have this kind of new ritual in the beginning of the week or I could have done it actually also yesterday evening at the end of the week to go through my to-dos and roughly think about because I don't like to plan exactly out my days because that's never gonna go through. I cannot tell on Sunday evening or Monday morning what am I gonna do on Wednesday afternoon exactly. So I like to give myself the space and the flexibility to schedule my time every day based on what are the priorities of that day. Maybe some new things came in and also based on how I feel and what I feel like I would like to tackle on the day. If nothing is urgent then I can pick which one I feel like I want to get done on that specific day. So now I'm just going to work on the to-do list and then let's see how many items get together and then we will start slowly to tackle them throughout the week. Yeah, now I'm just gonna probably tackle one item from this to-do list while I'm waiting for the food to get ready for lunch. big vegetables on some spinach and I made some quinoa and bulgur mixture the other day that I cooked it's a leftover and I also had a beetroot kind of hummus kind of dip as well that I needed to finish so all together I put them all together and I also put like a peanut butter soy sauce orange juice sauce on top for flavor 
magnifique. I made a coffee to go and now I'm going to go on a walk uh, to the closest park to be outside at least for 20 minutes. I don't know how the weather is actually, it doesn't look very nice, but if it's good enough I might sit down a bit and maybe even read something while I have my coffee and then I will be back and then I can tackle the rest of the to-dos. <laughs> This is a new routine that I started last week and I think it really helps me to take a break in the middle of the day, to stay focused afterwards, to renew my energy for the afternoon and also to force myself to go outside because especially in the colder weather, I tend to just stay inside and like a hermit, uh, you know, just in my comfort zone. But then I don't go out to the fresh air at all and I need that also that walk, that movement to stay energized, to stay positive. And I also need to have some change of scenery rather than just being at home for a whole day or even days on end. So let's go on this walk now. dark outside ever since I came back from the park it has been raining and it is pretty depressing to be honest so um, yeah in the afternoon I was just uh, doing some work getting some of the to do's off the list uh, I finished a video that I am just uploading actually it just finished uploading which means I can now save it and it will be up on Friday live on Friday 
So that is done. I have been working on some other things par parallel to this this afternoon. But now, because of this darkness and this rain and this moody weather, and because of my current mood, I am going to listen to some music and potentially dance a little bit to pick me up. And then it is soon time for dinner as well. I'm getting hungry. Don't forget to hydrate as well. And let's do some pick me up music listening or even dancing. dancing and the music was the biggest pick-me-up of the day. It's just a great boost of energy and happy hormones, a boost of dopamine, I suppose. It makes you motivated to continue your day, even though it is becoming late and it's getting dark outside. Don't forget to have, once again, a nutritious dinner. I just had leftovers because I still had some of the food that I made for lunch, but you can either cook if you have the time for it, or if not, let yourself order in something that you really like and enjoy eating without really thinking whether or not it is good for you. Of course, if you can, try to eat something which is healthy, but if you really want something and crave something, sometimes you just have to let yourself get what your body kind of craves for and this is something as well especially for women who are on our cycle and our hormones are fluctuating our body will tell us what we need if you feel like you can stop eating carbohydrates chances are you are at that part of your cycle when your progesterone is supposed to be going up and for this you need way more glucose, so if you restrict your carbohydrates during this time then your body will not function optimally. So sometimes you just need to let your cravings dictate what you eat. But of course you have to be mindful about this because that doesn't justify eating two bars of chocolate every day and a cake and sugary drinks and all that because that will actually just feel you depleted and low on energy, you will get an energy spike, an insulin rush, and then you will plummet down after that. In the evening, what I like to do, how to kind of rewind or how to get ready to sleep, to make sure that I have a good night's sleep, which is essential in order to regenerate the energy that we use that during the day and to set ourselves up for the next day, for an optimal day when we feel our best. Eight hours of sleep minimum is essential. So make sure that you start your evening routine on time so that you can get into bed. I know not everyone is able to do this, but try to not skip your evening routine even when you are starting it late. Make sure that you wash your face, you know, do your skincare if that's what you like to do, to take care of your skin, to take care of yourself. Maybe you would like to put on a face mask, then do that. It might make you feel good. 20 minutes of a sheet mask, lay down, maybe meditate while you are waiting for the sheet mask for the serums from the sheet mask to soak in or let yourself maybe watch a YouTube video that inspires you or that is from a creator that you like. 
before going to bed I also recommend you to tidy up your workplace and your kitchen so any areas in the apartment what you frequently use the places where, where you are going to go and use in the morning so maybe clean up the kitchen or wash the bathroom sink or just tidy up your desk before going to bed rather than waking up in the morning and your desk is messy or maybe the dishes are not done or the dishwasher was not emptied so these things can help your future self to ease your next morning when you wake up and you feel so good because you don't have to do these tasks it requires 10 minutes from your evening before going to bed and it will definitely make you feel better the next morning of course it also helps to take a shower especially if you can do maybe like a hot cold shower where you try to lower the temperature to cold shower a cold shower can be really energizing i'm not someone who likes to do this or usually does this but once in a while if i really need a pick me up it can be a good idea to try because it is proven to help and when you feel like you have taken care of your body, yourself, you took a shower, you washed your face and you took care of your body, put on maybe some moisturizer and um, did a little small spa day, maybe even dry brushed yourself before the shower, then you are ready to settle down and get ready for bed. Maybe at this time it is a good time to read something either something for fun that you enjoy maybe a romance if that's what you like or an other fiction book or a novel or if you like to educate yourself and read non-fiction you can also just learn and study a little bit maybe half an hour or an hour or even if it's just 10 minutes reading before going to bed it will help you wind down rather than scrolling your phone replying to messages or even just mindlessly scrolling through TikTok or Instagram Reels and then once you feel kind of sleepy and tired then it's time for you to go to sleep by this time because you were taking a shower washing your teeth washing your face doing your skincare routine and then you were reading you probably have not looked at a blue screen your phone or your computer for the last at least one hour which is great before going to bed for your sleep, sleep quality and I recommend you to go to bed before 10 or at least before 11 because you can get the best quality of sleep before midnight and as I mentioned get at least eight hours of sleep at night also another positive or another good point is to try to go to bed and wake up every day during the same time to have a sleep routine which your body is used to try to embrace the circadian rhythm as much as possible in the morning let as much sunlight into your apartment as you can so as soon as you wake up get those blinds open and make sure that you get the, the sun or at least the natural light and if you can even go on a walk which is also a very helpful uh, tip in case you need a little pick-me-up to go for a walk first thing in the morning to get as much natural light as you possibly can and of course if it's sunny during the day go out and embrace the sun as well some more tips that I can recommend and that uh, I also sometimes do use to help me, to pick me up, to get me in a better mood is try journaling. It can be either that you write down what happened to you during the day or how you feel or what are your worries and doubts or think about your ideal future, how you want your life to be in five years, how your life to be in a year what is your ideal self there are so many prompts that you can use for journaling so it's really not difficult you can write about anything and on youtube there are so many ideas as well on topics that you can think of to write and believe me it might sound like a lot and it might sound daunting to sit down and think about what to write and it might be discouraging at first but when you sit down and you actually start doing it 
the thoughts will just flow and the paper will just get fuller and fuller so it's not so difficult you can also start by just thinking of three things per day that you are grateful for in your life in general as well as the things that happen during the day or the small achievements that you might have reached during that day or just even you know if you are really down if there was anything that you achieved during that day a small task that you managed to get done that is already an achievement when someone is really not feeling well and their best and other times of course you are way more productive and when you feel more energized and you feel like you own it then of course there might be way more things to write down uh, that you are grateful for or that you feel like that you achieved during the day but of course don't compare these days with each other because we all have those days when you are feeling down and then there are other days when we feel super well and energized and we feel like we can get anything and everything done so give yourself praise if you feel down slow down you don't have to push yourself to the fullest let yourself feel the feelings and let yourself calm down a little bit maybe don't work that many hours as you would normally do but work less hours if you can allow yourself to do this and when it comes to your to-do list go through your to-do list and check off very easy tasks that you can get done in let's say five minutes or less for example writing that one email or checking up on one friend or calling your mom or doing the dishes so these quick achievements try to start with those because they will motivate you by feeling like oh I already crossed off three things from my to-do list and only 15 minutes have passed from the day so this can be very encouraging for the next tasks that need to be tackled when you feel like that you have the energy and the capacity to go for further tasks and if not then give yourself the time and let yourself just chill and relax maybe do some meditation or watch a movie or a youtube video some further tips that quickly come to my mind that can help you feel better is changing the sheets on your bed because sleeping in freshly washed sheets can be super nice feeling and it can help you have a better night's sleep going on a social media diet is also great let's avoid scrolling on TikTok or Instagram for a whole day maybe 24 hours or you set yourself a rule that today I can only go and scroll on social media for 15 minutes and I'm gonna do that at a specific time and I'm not gonna look at it any other time outside of that during today it is definitely helpful to reach out to friends when you are feeling a bit down or when you don't feel like your best maybe even go and have a coffee with someone or lunch or dinner or just uh, invite someone to your place to have a chat or if it's not possible in person then have a phone conversation this can also help to distract yourself from the feelings and the thoughts that you are struggling with during that day but you can also kind of get some of these thoughts out and and talk about it with a friend and maybe they can give you an insight or maybe you just need someone to listen to you so this can be a helpful uh, tactic ask them can you please hear me out? This is what I'm struggling with. I don't need you to fix this problem. I just want someone to hear me or listen to me. I just need to get it out from my system. And for those of you who are into spirituality and self-healing, who are on your self-healing or self-development journey, I also have a few book recommendations that you can look into either on audible or you can purchase them maybe you might have also read some of these these are the books that i read this year that all helped me one way or another to get into a better mindset to think about my future a bit more brightly to not let my negative thoughts and feelings dominate my thoughts but rather to be able to take on a more positive view on life and the future and 
they also have some practical tips as well on how to live a better life. So the first one is the one that I just started to reread. I finished this already once this year, but this is a book that you can keep continue to go back to and reread. And all of these books are like that. You can you can read them all at once, you can, or you can read just chapters from them and get back to them anytime when you feel like you need a bit of inspiration or you need a little bit of perspective on something. Because I feel like these ideas can be applied to so many facets of our lives. You when I read certain parts of a certain book, I can always apply it to what is happening in my life. What, let it be a relationship uh, situation, something with my family, something that I struggle internally or something at work. I can always relate these ideas to my current situation. So the first one is Deepak Chopra's The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. So if you are into spirituality, this is one of the books. And this is a very short, condensed book about the seven laws of success. So, for example, the first law is the law of poor potentiality, which talks about how there is basically endless potential in you and around you. You just have to let things happen to you and be open to the possibility that anything can happen. And this could generate a positive outline or a positive view inside of you. Three other books. Um, these are all from Jung Pueblo. The Inward and the Clarity and Connection. These two are basically a collection of short poems about life and spirituality. These I have already recommended on my channel before multiple times. And he has also this book, uh, The Lighter, and he is just coming out with his fourth book, which is uh, The Way Forward, I believe is the title. Uh, this is more about his story and how he got over his addiction and how he changed his life from being very down and deep in <laughs> a difficult situation to a striving author who is a best-selling author today. Ideas uh, on relationships, uh, healing, human habits and the human nature or even just about how to let go. Then if you're struggling with relationships or you know you are um, single and uh, trying to date and it's difficult to keep a positive mind or if you just had a painful breakup or even if you are in a relationship which is going well, I do recommend these two books. The first one is The Conversations on Love from Natasha Lund. This is a collection of essays, I would say. Um, so Natasha collected from many different people their stories. She wrote down their stories and they talk about how to fall in love, how to accept change, also talking about friendships or, the, or loneliness parenthood, sex, and so on. So it's not necessarily about love in a relationship, but also about friends and parents and kids and yeah, all of that. While The Eight Rules of Love from Jay Sherry is also about love, how to find it, keep it, and let it go. So this also is very insightful, has great ideas about love in general, whether if it's about relationships or friendships, you can use these as inspiration. And there are also a lot of uh, activities and a lot of prompts and ideas that you can do to, to, or try to do. So there are some meditations, there are some exercises that you can do with your partner in order to strengthen your relationship. There are some ideas on how to express your love to the others or if you are struggling with something how to resolve these kind of issues and so on and finally Jay Shetty's first book which is The Think Like a Monk which is a book that I read two years ago and I would like to reread it again is also about 
self-development and healing and how to deal with negativity, how to find your purpose, how to let go of your ego, how, for example, serving your community or providing service to the people around you for better causes can, for example, also help with you feeling fulfilled and feeling like you are a valuable part of the community. So, for example, this is another great idea that I just <laughs> kind of uh, remembered from this book is that, for example, volunteering or helping out in your community or just maybe helping a loved one who is an elderly who requires some more assistance. These kind of little acts of kindness or little acts of service can make you also feel better and content with your life. I hope this video helped you in case you were in a bit of a rut or if you felt a bit down, a little bit heavy or uneasy, if you felt a bit lost these days or if you had a um, hard night and you didn't want an experience from yesterday, the negative effects of an experience continue to spiral, if you just want to make yourself feel better, more energized and just stronger and more content. Let me know your tips in the comments down below. I would be very happy to collect even more ideas on how to make ourselves feel better and stronger and just happier in life. I'm looking forward to chat with you in the comments down below. And if you are not following my channel yet, then make sure to subscribe. I make lifestyle videos, so if that's something that you like to watch, then make sure to subscribe. There are also some travel vlogs on my channel if that's what you are interested in. And make sure to hit the like button if this was helpful. I'm looking forward to see you at my next videos. Until then, goodbye.